everybody if folks can take their seat we're gonna get going the camera is now rolling I believe so once again good evening uh, my name is Bob Belmore city manager and I'm going to provide an overview of the proposed fiscal year 2025 budget I have a series of slides that will give you a snapshot of what the proposed budget looks like and then I'll turn it over to school staff the superintendent and the business administrator to go over their slides and give you an idea what the school budget looks like first I want to extend my thanks to all our city departments department heads and staff for their efforts during the entire budget process and particularly to finance director Scott Smith for his assistance in developing the proposed budget in accordance with the Charter the focus of this presentation is aimed at providing an overview of the proposed city budget and once again school staff will go over um, an overview of the school department budget the FY 2024 budget was prepared in accordance with the city charter section 7.4.1 limitation on budget increase also known as the tax cap provision of the city charter real estate tax revenue is limited to a factor no more than a change in the national CPI urban which was 4.12 percent for the calendar year 2023 in accordance with section 7.4.1 B budget limitation in revaluation re years the limitation is subject only to the national CPI urban only so we can't include any net construction rev, um, increases uh, once again the annual budget in the city charter the manager must present a proposed budget to the mayor and council no later than March 15th of each year the manager reviews budget requests with department heads and key staff and I adjust departmental requests while maintaining an eye and keeping the budget efficiently funded to maintain core city services the school board adopts their budget based on the superintendent's proposal um, which he uh, does with uh, various various um, staff including the business administrator the tax cap summary FY 24 that was raised by taxes the, the amount of the budget uh, 33.5 million adding an amount of increase for the CPI which was 4.12 percent increases it by another almost 1.4 million so the amount allowed to be raised by taxes for the next fiscal year is limited to 34 million nine hundred twenty six thousand four hundred seventy the estimated amount to be raised by taxes city school and county hits that number right on the nose 34 million nine hundred twenty six thousand four seventy so we're estimating nothing no amount under the tax cap some budget notes general fund budget the gross budget reflects an increase of five hundred ninety two thousand dollars or three point six four percent salaries and associated payroll driven costs increased by nine hundred and forty one thousand seven thirty one all other operating expenses increased by a little over eighteen thousand debt services and capital leases decreased by twelve thousand two fifty and capital outlay actually decreased by almost three hundred thousand I'm proposing two new staffing changes a full-time equipment mechanic for the Public Works Department effective December 1 2024 and this person will also help with winter maintenance he'll be uh, required to have a CDL license and also a part-time patrol officer effective January 1 2025 proposed budget revenue estimates our current budget is in the first column or the middle part of the page the slide and then the proposed revenues is on the last far right hand side taxes and penalties we went from 33.8 million to 35.2 million round figures license permits fees went from 2.1 million to actually 2.1 million it was a little less than a 50 fifty thousand dollar increase intergovernmental again um, was uh, actually flatlined one million three hundred fifty eight thousand 
Education actually, revenue actually, sorry, decreased as the superintendent will get into. Went from almost uh, 10.8 million to uh, just shy of 10.2 million. Other revenue come, was a slight increase from 1.1 1 .1 to 1 point, almost 1.3 million. The use of fund balance that I'm recommended to the city council is 1.5 million, which is the same as last year. So you can see that uh, the revenue increase went from 50,766,000 50, to, to 51,743,000. Revenue increase from 1,500 to 1,473,000.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.00.
capital outlay, 45000 and that's actually a decrease of almost 148000 And other expenses and contingency comes in at 200200 and that's a 50, little over $57,000 decrease. Our water and sewer funds, our enterprise funds, $7.1 million, and that's almost a $900 decrease. Our cable fund, as proposed, is $69,500, and that's a $4,800 decrease. Again, just a visual pie chart. It gives you a slice of the pie where it goes. Public works, 21%. Fire, 17%. Police 31, those are our larger departments. And you have finance administration 11, city management 4%, capital outlay 1%, development services 6%. And just to uh, further explain other appropriations, again, they include debt service, capital leases, contingency, transfer to capital reserve funds, and super fund landfill monitoring costs. And for the purpose of this slide, police and fire are represented separately However, in the city budget document, they make up the public safety department a total 48% of the total city budget. Again, just a pie chart to give you a visual of how, how it's sliced up, the general fund appropriations. And the vast majority, as you can well imagine, is, is uh, salary and benefits at 71%. And then you have uh, capital, uh, debt service, other operating, utilities and contracted services. Utilities are telephone, internet, heat and electricity. And included in capital is the capital outlay budget plus 900,000 for, for uh, road resur resurfacing projects. And actually the $900,000 is included in the public works department section of the budget. I'd like to give you a snapshot of where we stand regarding personnel. Full-time personnel under the general fund umbrella, we have 93. Part-time general fund employees at 10. And as you can see, the again, the visual using a pie chart, uh, police is the, the, the strongest as, as far as personnel with 40. You have fire at 19, public works at 16, manager's office three, finance 16, and development services nine. Statistics represented here are the number of personnel in the proposed FY25 budget. They do not include elected officials or seasonal employees. We do use seasonal employees for recreation programs, uh, particularly our summer camp programs, and for snow removal with the Public Works Department. Also, figures above are only for general fund, and they do not include seven full-time employees in water division, which includes staffing at the water plant, and also water distribution personnel. Also does not include six full-time employees at the wastewater treatment facility. And we do have one full-time clerk and, and, and their duties are split between water and wastewater responsibilities. In the proposed budget, capital improvements and capital outlay, as we've been doing for uh, quite a few years now, there's a $20,000 down payment on vehicle lease purchase. We've embarked quite a few years ago on a lease purchase program from uh, much of our rolling stock. In the next budget, we're proposing purchasing a one frontline police SUV cruiser and one unmarked police vehicle, city engineer vehicle, and a parks maintenance truck. For the master plan, in order to meet the tax cap requirements of this budget, I had to modify what was in the CIP from uh, approximately $90,000 to splitting it up over four years. And we're proposing $25,000 for uh, completing year one or one chapter. And then as we move forward to be uh, an additional chapter each year for the next following three years. And I would also add that the uh, planning office was successful in acquiring a couple of grants and have already embarked upon a couple of chapters for the uh, city's master plan in regards to land use and housing. Proposed budget, looking at an estimated tax rate, and as a reminder, our tax rate is set by the New Hampshire Department of Revenue Administration in the fall of each year. Usually it's around October, sometimes it slides into November. 
Our actual tax rate for this year is shown in the first column. The second is our estimate, and then the changes in the far right-hand column. And I need to underscore that the property tax rate is based on an estimated assessed value of $1,150,000,000. And this is for comparison purposes only. The city has undergone a citywide revaluation, and our actual net assessment is unknown at this time. So this is just for comparison purposes. We don't have the actual revaluation of the full uh, property value of the city until later in the year. So I'm looking at city uh, rolling across the from left to right. The city goes from 891 to 924. So I'll just focus on the change. The city will increase by 33 cents. The local school by approximately 72 cents. And the state portion of the school is actually a decrease of 7 cents. The county increases by 11 cents. So if the budget, as proposed, was passed by the council without change, our estimate was increased by a dollar nine cents. However, again, um, until we get the full revaluation numbers, this is just for comparison purposes to try to give you some sort of sense of how this budget might affect the tax rate. Again, just using a visual with the pie chart. $30.39 per thousand, how it's split up. You get the school at 61, the city at 30%, and the county approximately 9%. Proposed budget. If we would use a $300,000 property value for a residential assessment, you have the actual tax bill in the first column, the estimate of what it, how it might increase if the proposed budget was passed, and what the change might be in, in the further right-hand column. So again, it goes city for the first item. That would increase by $99. School, state, and, and uh, local school rate would increase by $195. The county portion would increase by $33. So the net increase for a home valued at $300,000 if this budget was passed for comparison purposes only again would increase by some $327. Wastewater fund, enterprise funds. Proposed FY25 budget, a little over 3.6 million. A couple of budget highlights. It's a decrease in the overall budget of some $564,360, a reduction of some 13.5%. Capital items included in this proposed budget $145,000 for a portable vacuum unit and $100,000 for HVAC improvements associated with the wastewater treatment facility lab section of that facility, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning improvements. Looking at the water fund and the proposed FY25 budget, equal two point, almost $2.9 million. Budget highlights, it's a Budget decrease of some almost $363,000 or a reduction of 11.21%. CIP projects included being proposed for City Council review. Engineering designed to replace a water main on Indigo Hill Road from Main Street to Rita Road and for a section of water main on Old Rochester Road. Solid waste, our paper bag, blue bag budget. Proposed is 676169 Our bag rates will increase to $2.65, $2.65 for a 30-gallon bag, and $2.10 for a 15-gallon bag on July 1st of this calendar year. Anticipated revenues for FY25 is approximately $737,000. Just one bullet here on the highlights. The proposed budget increase of almost 29,000 is an increase of 4.47%. With that, that's a brief overview of the school budget. I look forward to reviewing it with the council. We have a budget workshop this Saturday at 8.30 that will be televised. It'll go over the city departments uh, uh, one by one and also go in depth a little bit with uh, community outreach budgeting. So I'll turn this over to the superintendent and his staff. Thank you, uh, City Manager Belmore. I appreciate it. Um, I also want to uh, thank the council 
for meeting with the school board at a joint workshop shop session uh, a couple, about a month or so ago, and not not a heck of a lot's changed since then, right, Katie? So I'm going to yield uh, my time to Katie. She's going to present uh, the operating budget, and I'll be up here to answer questions and and elaborate if we need to on educational programs. Go ahead, Katie. Good evening, everybody. Um, so I'm going to go over um, two scenarios of our budget. Um, so we start our budget process by meeting with all of our building administrators, special ed. Um, I take care of the all updating all the salaries and benefits, and we come up with a uh, superintendent's recommended budget. So that budget includes meeting all of our contractual obligations and keeping all of our current programs and services in place. And then when we get the um, tax cap figure, um, we then have to um, go through a, an exercise to come up with a tax cap compliant budget, which in, the, in this year includes reductions to the superintendent's recommended budget um, to meet that tax cap. So for the superintendent's recommended budget, as I mentioned, we're meeting all of our contractual obligations for salaries and benefits for staff. We are meeting all of our legal obligations for special education. We're keeping all of our current programs for our students. It includes staff for our preschool program that was previously funded through our ESSER funds. It includes staff for grounds maintenance. And it includes two new school to home coordinators that will help with uh, increasing our attendance rates for our students, which we've been seeing in increased um, truancy rates for our students by supporting families and completing documentation related to their educational programming and proactively engaging with families um, with resources and programs. For our estimated revenue for the superintendent's recommended budget, um, our revenue estimated for next year is uh, $10,381,308. That is a, a decrease of $388,716. The majority of that decrease is due to our state of New Hampshire adequacy um, education aid by $318,000. We also have a reduction in building aid. Um, this is for revenue we received for the Idlehurst building. Um, building aid, when that was built, we get a amount each year for the next 20 years, and each year that amount decreases. That formula has changed since that time, so now you get building aid up front. So when we received building aid for Maplewood Project, when we did the renovations there, um, we received that money up front when we built the project. There's a reduction in indirect cost revenue. This is for um, revenue we received to administer our federal grants, and it's just based on our allocations that we received. There's also a reduction in the use of fund balance. Um, we've chosen not to utilize that um, resolution this year um, due to our tight budget. Um, we're not sure what we're going to have available at the end of the year. We did see some increases um, for Rollinsford SAU fee for services. Rollinsford pays for the um, SAU services from SAU 56, and it's based on the SAU budget. Um, that's an increase of 34,413. Um, we increased our building use fees for um, Head Start that utilizes a classroom at Idlehurst, and we had an increase in other state aid of just under $17,500. For our proposed expenditures for the superintendent's recommended budget, um, our total budget was $32,685,977. That was an increase of $1,623,561. I've broken out the increases based on negotiated contracts. So our first is our custodial contract. Um, there were salary increases of 3.5%. Uh, our health insurance rate went up by 4.9%, and then the dental rate was 7%. So for our total custodial contract, it was an increase of 47806 For our teacher negotiated contract, salary increase of 4.5%. Um, health insurance uh, was 4.1%. Dental, 7%. There was also an increase to our medical buyback for um, employees who choose not to take our health insurance. Track changes for employees, that's for uh, employees and I mean teachers who are moving from say a bachelor's um, to a master's. Um, they've you know gone forward and gotten their uh, extra degree, so those are the track changes. Retirement payouts um, for teachers who are retiring this year, they have in their collective bargaining agreement payouts for retirement as well as sick, um, sick day buyouts. Appendix C increases, those are for the stipends for our uh, co-curricular and athletics. So the total teacher negotiated contract increase was $797,835. For our SACA contract, this includes our paraprofessionals and our clerical staff in each of the buildings. Um, we just finished negotiating that uh, contract this year, so um, there were salary and step increases for 327,000, 
health insurance and dental rate increases for a total increase of $372,000. Our administrator contracts, um, these are, include our building administrators as well as the facilities director. Um, the salary increases, for um, there's longevity increases for staff who have been in the district um, for a number of years. There was a health rate increase, a dental increase, again, medical buyback for our um, employees who choose not to take our health insurance, and an athletic director increase. We um, switched the way the athletic director um, was funded. Um, he used to be a teacher and then did um, athletic director on the side. It's now going to be athletic director, um, full-time administrator who's going to do um, K through 12 uh, athletic director. So our total administrator contracts um, was an increase of 139314 So when you add up all the um, salaries and benefits, the grand total is $1,357,000, which represents about 84% of um, the increase to our budget. Then we have special education. Um, there's an additional paraprofessional staff that was needed based on students that are moving into our district that require paraprofessionals. Our special ed transportation with first student, there's increases there for our regular in-district transportation as well as the out-of-district placements and homeless. We also pay dues to Stratford Learning Center to be part of their consortium. And then we have special education out of district placements and contracted services that both saw a decrease. Um, that's just based on students that are um, graduating or leaving the district. So total special ed uh, had an increase of 126,443. I mentioned at the beginning we um, did add a few new staff positions. Um, this is the preschool program. We had existing one preschool program prior to COVID, but we saw an increase in the number of referrals that we have for uh, preschool. So we added a second program with our ESSER funds um, with the intent that we thought that these referrals would slowly decrease after COVID, but they have not. So we've had to incorporate this second preschool program into our budget. We added back the grounds maintenance position. This was a position we had last year, but it was cut out of the budget during last year's budget process. Um, but we see the need is still there. So we've added it back into the budget. And again, those two school to home coordinators, as I mentioned at the beginning. And we did reduce the truant officer because the intent is that these school to home coordinators would take on that role. So total new staff um, is uh, 304,135. For transportation, we have a contract with first student for both regular ed and RCTC transportation. So these are contractual um, increases here, uh, total 28,198. And then there's other budget changes throughout. Um, the SAU budget increases are 191,000. That was primarily due to adding an additional position for a special education director. Um, we have two coordinators currently and we're adding in a director. Our increase for Primex workers comp and property liability is a small increase. We had an increase for the school resource officer, which is our portion, 75% um, of that position. We um, have an increase for our copier usage. There's increases for both middle and high athletics, which includes salaries and um, officials. The middle school increase um, was basically due to off offering more programs at the middle school level. And the high school also was due to, we used to receive free services for our athletic trainer, um, but we've been approached by the current provider and there we now are required to start building in money into our budget to um, support that. And then retiree health insurance, um, an increase there. These are for our teachers who retire in the collective bargaining agreement. They could can keep a single plan um, paid for by the district. We had a technology software increase. And then throughout the building, each of the building principals, when they submitted their budgets, they had um, small supply increases. So there's a total there for all buildings of 39,960. The facilities increases, 20,822. We had some other staff and benefit changes um, from staff coming and going and leaving the district. We had a reduction in our debt service and a reduction for our copier leases that we just renewed last year. We saw some savings in that area. We were also able to reduce um, some of the funds that were approved in our supplemental appropriation this year with the adequacy funds. They were the other projects that we were taking care of that weren't um, ongoing, so we were able to reduce those out. 
And then we also adjust our retiree replacement. So any of the teachers that are retiring, we take where they are on the current schedule and we replace them at middle of the road. So we do a master's step seven. Um, so that gave us a little bit of savings there. So we had a savings in our total other of 192,000. So in total for our total superintendent's recommended budget, as I said, our total expenditure increase was um, just over $1.6 million, which is an estimated tax impact of approximately $1.41. Our loss in revenue of 388716 estimated impact of $0.34. Cents. So our total net budget increase was just over $2 million, um, which is an estimated um, 175. So now I'm gonna talk about the tax cap budget. So once we received the dollar amount that we could increase, um, we then take our superintendent's recommended budget and do some changes to the budget to meet these obligations. So the tax cap budget includes reductions totaling $1,176,230. It does decrease our current programs that we offer for students. There's a reduction of 9.7 total staff positions throughout the district. It decreases the supplies in each of the schools in the district, and it eliminates the SYC before and after school program. So in order to meet the tax cap, we had to do um, reductions to our budget. So we've broken them out into three tiers. So tier one would be um, all, of the, all of the tiers have an impact to our district but we did it based on the least amount of impact to the highest impact. So tier one, um, we reduced and level zero funded all computer hardware out of the budget. We also took each of the building level increases that each of the building administrators requested in their budget and level funded them, as well as facilities. We reduced the late bus so that we have a late bus. Um, this is one that we um, reduce each year when we have budget cuts. And then this year we added it back in with the supplemental. Um, it's to help provide transportation after school for our students um, that st may stay late for homework help or other activities. We reduced a um, half time Maplewood building aid position. In the SAU budget, we had um, included a position for a data manager. Currently, we contract out for that service, and we would like to be able to add that in as a position at the SAU level, um, but we're reducing it in the Tier 1 reductions. And we reduced one of the new school-to-home coordinator positions. So Tier 1 reductions total 267207 For Tier 2 reductions, as I mentioned, this eliminates the SYC program. So there's a net decrease of 100,000 because we have revenue that also comes in for this program. So when we reduce the program, the revenue also gets reduced. The grounds maintenance position was reduced. We eliminated a part-time foreign language position at the high school, a special ed para at Maplewood. Now this wouldn't be a one-on-one -on -one that we are required to provide. It's more of a classroom support paraprofessional. And another Idlehurst special ed para position, a part-time custodian, and one middle school classroom teacher based on enrollment. So total tier two is 428,451. And then tier three reductions. These are the reductions that have the most impact. Um, we're eliminating a CTC program, a high school teaching position, one library position between the middle school and high school. So they would have to share one librarian between the two buildings or media specialist. Um, a building aid at Maplewood the other school to home coordinator, so we would have no, um, neither one of those positions. And then a middle school case manager, which is for special education. So total tier three budget reductions, 512,296. So here's the total budget summary. Um, again, a total uh, expenditure increase of just 257,331. Our revenue changed because, again, I had to reduce the revenue for SYC. So right now there's $140,000 that comes from parents and 50,000 contribution from the city. So um, that's the change there. Total uh, loss in revenue of 578716 So a total net budget increase of $836,047, which is the amount allowed by the tax cap. Again, estimated tax impact of 73. I think Bob said 72, so I rounded up a little bit, but. Again, it's estimated at this point. Um, so that is our total um, presentation for tonight. We just want to thank you for the opportunity to present our budget, and we look forward to collaborating closely with the City Council throughout the budget process. 
as we explore opportunities for preserving our current programs and services for students of the Somerville School District. And I wanted to publicly thank uh, Katie for working closely with me and uh, our entire administrative team. It, it takes a team effort. Uh, City Manager Belmore mentioned that about his staff. It really is a team effort, and I want to thank you publicly, Katie, and to all the folks that uh, helped us put this budget together. So with that, thank you. Thank you, Superintendent and Katie. Um, that concludes the budget presentation. The City Council will meet in regular session at 7 p.m., and there's a 7 p.m. public hearing on the proposed budget. And again, this Saturday at 8.30, uh, the city side of the ledger will be um, discussed in more detail. The council may also open the budget up uh, perhaps tonight after the, uh, first, uh, the, the uh, public hearing. Thank you, and good evening. <laughs>